So let's look at the oxidation of alcohols using some examples. Remember, a primary alcohol can be oxidised using acidified potassium dichromate to an aldehyde, which can be further oxidised to a carboxylic acid. With a secondary alcohol, it can be oxidised to a ketone, but there's no further oxidation possible using acidified potassium dichromate. And with a tertiary alcohol, it won't be oxidised at all. So let's try applying this to a few different examples. The first alcohol we're going to have a look at is 2,2-dimethylpropan-1-ol. So we put methyl groups on the second carbon and an OH group on that first carbon. So what happens if we oxidise it? Well, firstly we have a primary alcohol. The OH group's on the carbon, which only has one carbon coming away from it. We try to oxidise it, that means we can go to an aldehyde. And the structure of the aldehyde looks like this. Notice you also form water because two hydrogens have been lost. And then that can oxidise even further to a carboxylic acid because we were using a primary alcohol. The carboxylic acid looks like this. So notice you go from a primary alcohol to an aldehyde to a carboxylic acid. Let's have a look at another example. Example two. Let's have a look at a molecule of 2 methyl butan 2 ol Oh, excuse me. Example 2. Check my spelling. Okay, so 2 methyl butan 2 ol looks like this. You've got an OH group on the second carbon along with a CH3 group. Remember, we number from right to left, keep the numbers as low as possible. And what we have here is a tertiary alcohol. It won't be oxidized any further on that carbon. There's already three carbon atoms, there's no room for further oxidation. Okay, example 3. Let's have a look at 3,3-dimethylpentan-2-ol. That's quite a big molecule. You may see it written with a condensed formula. So the condensed formula is where you don't draw all of the bonds. You just write the CH3s and CH2s. And if, if you're given a structure like that, you need to unpick it. So your CH3, CH2 looks like that. Then you've got a C with two CH3s coming off it. And then you've got another C with an H and an OH coming off it. And then a CH3 on the end. Notice the carbon that has the alcohol group has two carbons coming off it. That means we're dealing with a secondary alcohol. If we try to oxidise a secondary alcohol, that means we can go to a ketone. And we doubly bond the oxygen that was part of the alcohol. Take a hydrogen away, and that's the ketone that we get. Also remember you form water. So a secondary alcohol goes to give a ketone. Okay, let's look at a final example. This is a tricky example. Um, we're going to look at a molecule of cyclohexanol, and cyclo means in a ring or in a circle, and hex means six. We've got six carbons in a ring with an OH, but is it a primary, secondary, or tertiary alcohol? Well, it's hard to tell, so we've not seen one like this, but notice on the carbon with the OH group, we have got two carbon atoms, so we can treat this as a secondary alcohol. If you think about it, we can get a C double bond O here, but we can't get a COOH. So we can go as far as having a ketone, but we can't turn this into an acid without breaking carbon-carbon bonds. So the ketone structure is going to look like this.